Twitch has added an automatic brand safety score, which grades how brand friendly every streamer is based on like things like chat behavior, band history, many ratings by Twitch staff, uh, games played, age, automata, and more. So if we look at the code strings, we can see that some new things have been added to Twitch's API. What's an API? Well, it's a thing that developers can call to be able to get certain information. So for example, uh, if you have access to it, uh, you can call different kinds of information, theoretically almost any information, for, uh, like, like with a script, like a programming script. So for example, you could pull something like viewer demographics or like any kind of data. So they basically added a new string of things that's possible to pull uh, from uh, a certain API. And that is here. So a rating of the streamer performed by a Twitch affiliated reviewer, the current state of the streamer's relationship with Twitch, if the streamer has been suspended, a general reason why, if the streamer is a partner or not, and then it continues. Um, there's some stuff like brand safety data relating solely to the given channel, a rating of the streamer the, uh, by the Twitch re reviewer, if, they, uh, if the streamer is a partner, if the streamer is 18 years or older, 21 years or older, if they have automated, auto mod or not enabled, or whatever. And uh, this led to this like whole narrative, and also like a bunch of freaking, like there's a Deserto article that's like, um, Twitch adds a brand safety score rating for streamers. What does this mean? Twitch has reportedly done like this, and like everyone's trying to figure out what's going on. So literally linking like Terry and say Sarah's tweets, and even saying that like Doctor Disrespect um, is uh, like could find out why he's banned and all this stuff. That's implying that he doesn't already know, um, which I'm very deeply of the opinion that he does. Um, and then like this goes on and on. Okay, so like we have to like I think the first thing to do right now is like clear up exactly what this is. Okay, so. This is an API call to a uh, I'm going to I'm going to show you exactly what it is by opening up the original code that Terry was so nice to share with us and it just kind of gives you a description of what it does. It grabs the brand safety score of a channel as well as relevant data used to calculate it. Also returns custom parameters about this channel to forward to VAES for ad targeting purposes. So what is VAES? And that is the crux of this thing. Well, we can put that into Google and you can look at what it is. VAS is a ad system from Amazon. If you, ha if you were following this channel, you might have seen that advertising uh, has been added recently. I think this was a couple months ago. Here it is. Uh, on September, Amazon starts selling Twitch ads inventory programmatically meaning that Amazon is now adding a lot of their carousel of advertisements into Twitch. So they are, so basically Twitch will get more ads from like Amazon's carousel. Uh, previously, all Twitch sales were done manually. If that is a problem, it's insane to believe that compared to other platforms. But yes, all sales of advertising on Twitch. If you saw an ad on Twitch, that was done manually between a salesperson and the brand in question. So VAS.IAD.Amazon uh, ad system is actually just the server that is the automatic ad system carousel for Amazon. So what this entire thing is, literally all of it, is actually just ad targeting. There is absolutely nothing to do with a credit score. There is nothing to do with bans. The idea of like a streamer knowing why they were banned, this is completely untrue. Like no one's gonna figure out why they're banned from this. Casual people aren't even gonna have access to this API. This is literally just a, this is literally just for better ad targeting because Twitch is setting up a system to be, um, to be, to, to present ads from Amazon in a better way because right now it's it, like right now if I send an ad to Twitch there is absolutely no system in place to gauge where that ad goes so you have a you have the same chance of getting that ad on a Devin Nash stream that you do a train wreck stream that you do a soda poppin stream right so what Twitch is adding is ad targeting Ad targeting is something that is on every single platform in the existence of the humanity. And, and an incredible bout of irony, all the people that are posting on Twitter about this, are they themselves being ratioed by a brand score algorithm that is on Twitter? Because Twitter itself has one of these, like everybody does. It is absolutely a non-starter. All of this stuff is completely false. They are literally just looking for a reason to be mad at Twitch. The entire LSF thread is total bullshit. All of it is bullshit. At the Reddit is, is bullshit. This, this, this quote, okay, which is Twitch staff now gets to decide how much money streamers get from ads through a brand risk store is absolutely inane. It is factually false because 
All Twitch ads are served to streamers on a fixed CPM, meaning you get paid the same for the ad no matter what. Now, on the back end, Twitch can make more or less depending on the uh, ad they sell, uh, the brand, the deal they make, etc. Because, uh, as aforementioned, uh, each deal is manual. So, it doesn't matter how well your brand score or whatever that is. It's, there's not even a brand score, but even if there was, it wouldn't matter how much that is because you're getting paid the exact same for ads as every other broadcaster is. It doesn't matter. There are no different things from fixed CPMs. By the way, this is a problem. I have, I have, I have said this a bunch of times and said that I don't like the fact that Twitch has a fixed CPM rate because YouTube, for example, on a dynamic CPM rate means you can make more money by serving certain types of content. Want to know how, who has the most advanced ad targeting in the world? YouTube. Want to know who makes more money than anybody else as a content creator? YouTubers. Why? Because you can fix your content or you can structure your content on YouTube to specifically serve things that will get you higher paying ads. For example, the highest paying system in YouTube for advertising is finance. You get paid more for financial videos than you get paid for any other thing on Twitch, uh, on YouTube. So YouTube has dynamic CPMs. If I talk about finance, I might make $30 CPM. Uh, these are rough estimates. If I talk about Minecraft, I might make $8 CPM. If I talk about um, violence, I might make $1 CPM or no CPM. And what makes YouTube so attractive to advertisers is that advertisers know exactly what they are getting because they know that they can be served to certain channels like Robinhood, for example, who wants to do a, what's like, let's say, Robinhood wants to do a sponsorship with influencers. And they know that they can get in front of finance people like Stefan Graham or Graham Stefan, whatever his name is. Is it Stefan Graham? He, I, don't, I don't even... Like Graham Stefan? What is it, guys? Like Graham Stefan. Okay. And specifically target their downloads. Well, they can go to Twitch, pay XY, XY CPM, right? Cost per 1,000 people that it gets in front of, and have no idea where that ad goes. Or they can go to YouTube, pay a CPM based on popularity, and know exactly where that ad goes. And I guess, like, the problem with um, this whole narrative that, like, Twitch staff now gets to decide how much money streamers get from ads, etc., is just a lack of awareness of how the agency world works. Um, there is a brand risk assessment for every single influencer on every deal that's ever been made in the history of mankind. Why is that? Well, I'll give you an example, right? It's because, let's say that Coca-Cola wants to sponsor me, okay? Coca-Cola wants to sponsor me, and then Cash App wants to sponsor me. Two different examples, okay? So Cash App and Coca-Cola. They are both going, two, two brands that have advertised on Twitch before. They are both going to have a subjective assessment of my brand. Cash App is cool with sponsoring the Trainwrecks podcast, which is widely considered to be one of the most... Um, uh, the Scuff Podcast is widely considered to be one of the most like controversial podcasts on, on the internet. Uh, whereas, like Cash Apple doesn't give a, doesn't give a shit, right? Coca Cola will probably not sponsor that because they will evaluate that as a brand risk. So they aren't relying on Twitch to be able to tell them if someone is a brand risk or not. They're relying on their own internal metrics of whether to sponsor people or not. That's bad because that means that Twitch is getting far less actual opportunities to do advertising deals with people. Streamers make less money because less ads show up because there's no way for anybody to tell if Twitch is going to serve your ad to a brand safe person or a brand risky person. So ad targeting allows you to get around that problem, right? 
and allows you to um, better serve ads to higher numbers of people. So the end result here is that everybody makes more money. Everybody makes more money. I mean, if you think about even like something like Shopify, Shopify has a score system from one to 10 when someone buys something. So uh, Shopify will literally have a one to five score for people that like don't check out at carts or people that don't, um, that, that don't finish their orders or return a ton of stuff. Amazon has a score system for people that return a ton of stuff or whatever, blah, blah, blah. It goes on and on and on, right? Like every single person, every single brand has risk scores because this is the way that you do efficient advertising so that everybody makes more money. It is not true that Twitch staff gets to decide how much money people make from ads. Ads are a fixed CPM. Twitch staff individually will never decide if you are a brand risk or not. That is the uh, duty of the agencies and brands that represent those streamers and the deals that get made on the back end. Twitch will decide, and by Twitch I mean trust and safety, will decide if you are bannable or not. If you are banned, you don't get ads because you're banned. If you are not banned, you will get ads. If you are considered a brand risk, you will be demonetized on Twitch eventually. This is how it works on every single other platform. So there is a couple of different like areas that you can do, right? There's like normal person, there's like affiliate, there's like partner, and then there's um, like a preferred partner, I'll call it, which doesn't really have a tier, but that like refers to like people like me that have like an agency or something, preferred partner that have like uh, specific brand deals, okay? So what'll happen is it'll add like a system of qualifications and like the way that YouTube does it is green, yellow, red, okay? Green means you're cool, uh, monetize everything, right? And if somebody has the link to the green, yellow, red system for YouTube, you can link it to me. Yellow is uh, kinda cool, uh, but hey, you talk about sex and violence sometimes, said so we're going to limit some of your ads and red is no ads you can still be on youtube though and then of course there's banned which is uh your banned <laughs> so it's pretty hard to get banned on youtube you have to try pretty hard um eventually there will be a system in place that is similar on Twitch because there has to be. Okay, Devin, why does there have to be? Well, because we need to be able to separate green and yellow people, which we'll also refer to as brands. Why? Because nobody wants to advertise with a platform that doesn't separate them. Why? Well, because I can't be sure my ad is going to someone who is going to literally talk about some super brand sensitive thing, or if it's a cat stream, right? I literally don't like, okay, you have to understand that like on Twitch right now, there are literally channels that are just getting embedded and botted to oblivion that nobody is watching because botting and embedding is a huge problem and ads are getting served on those embeds and it's costing advertisers thousands of dollars, millions of dollars, actually, and nobody is doing a thing about it. Like, there are so many problems with, with like that we have on the internet without efficient ad, ad, ties, ad, uh, ad targeting. And I also um, want to say something about ads. Because um, it annoys me when people are like, wow, um, the internet would be better if we just didn't have ads, you know? Like, uh, you know, ads are so bad. Like, shut up, dumbass, okay? Let me talk about that for a second. Ads are literal. There there's two ways to, to freaking do a business, okay? There's ads and there's subscriptions. You choose which one you want, okay? Ads means you the customer don't have enough money and you pay in time the time that you watch an ad subscriptions are you the customer pay a flat monthly rate for uh the ability to access a service so it's like netflix right or uh, amazon prime etc so I have spoken to great degree 
on why you cannot monetize this website, by which I mean Twitch, uh, via subscriptions. You can't do it because subscriptions don't scale and ads do. Uh, this is a big argument I have with other people that talk about content creation because I feel like I'm the only person that talks about content creation that understands this. Probably because I'm the only person that talks about content creation that runs an agency. Ads are always scalable, right? So you can technically you can sell an ad for an infinite amount of money, right? So like I could sell you an ad for a uh, million dollars. Like look at the Super Bowl, right? A 30 second ad on the Super Bowl is worth what? Like a million dollars worth a lot. Here's the link to the yellow, green, green, red system. Let me look at that. Yeah, there you go. Thanks. So this is what we're looking for. Right. Just, just goes through like a, the guidelines list of um, exactly what gets you monetized and whatnot. Basically, ad targeting. It's kind of boring, but like, yeah, it's like something you can look at if you're interested. Uh, maybe we'll post it in the video description slash the chat. But you can see here like adult content gets flagged a certain way. Nudity gets flagged a certain way. So you can, like it'll just give you like uh, ads content for like what you can do. Um, so, like, you can turn on ads, but only brands will opt in to those ads. That's, like, yellow. You can turn on ads for this content. That's green. You should turn off ads for this content is red, right? Uh, and it gives you, like, guidelines as to what that stuff is. Okay. So, uh, anyway, back to the ads and subscription model. Ads are theoretically infinitely scalable, meaning that um, the ad system is dynamically valuable based on supply and demand. So an ad on like the Super Bowl is worth a lot. An ad that's like on like a 3 a.m. slot when nobody's watching on a random TV channel isn't worth almost anything, right? And that's how the system should be because we should, supply and demand is basically the basis of like capitalism in our economy. That's good. Okay, so subscriptions don't scale infinitely. So if I charge all of my customers $10 a month, it is a big deal for me to move all my customers to $2 extra a month, to $12 a month, right? That's a 20% that's a increase in their services, effectively. A little bit less than that, but like, you know, whatever. And, um, and it's, uh, it's a huge amount of money. So uh, if Netflix increases their prices by 20, 15 to 20%, everybody gets butt detonated. Um, but if ads increase their, di their dynamic rates by 30 to 50%, nobody sees it. Anyway, subscription uh, methods, subscriptions are fine. And some of the most successful businesses, particularly the FANG stocks, have been built on subscription models. Things like Netflix or things like Amazon Prime uh, have what's called MRR, which is monthly reoccurring revenue. Monthly reoccurring revenue is great because it uh, sets up a business to understand what its cash flow is and understand like, what its expenditures are. Build businesses very successfully this way. And many Twitch streamers monetize off of uh, subscriptions as well. So back to Twitch and ads. The thing that Twitch streamers don't understand is that every Twitch streamer of a certain size, I'd say like 1,000 to 1,500 concurrents, should really be making like four to 5K a month off of ads, but they're really making like 500 to $600 off of ads. The reason for that is because they are, uh, ads are badly targeted on Twitch. They don't understand. Everybody thinks that tw Twitch streamers should make all their money off of subscriptions. Why? Twitch takes 50% of all your subscription revenue. That's ass, as we've seen before in previous videos I've done, right? Like when I, when I talked about um, Twitch as a pimp, I, I, I showed you guys that Twitch literally makes, you can look at this, you can see Twitch literally takes the highest percentage off of, um, off of a revenue split than any other platform. You can literally go on OnlyFans and you'll make more money, 30% more money, than you would on Twitch through subscriptions. I don't understand this meme why Twitch streamers need to monetize through subscriptions. It's like forcing the customer to pay for you to stream is like lazy on Twitch's part. Ads make a lot more sense because ads... Um, are via the customer never pays for the ad. It, it, it's um it's dynamic via brand and um but by brand agency and streamer relationship. And ads are dynamic. So the better you sell ads and the better that that inventory becomes, the more money you make. I don't know if am I explaining this well. Basically, what I'm saying is like ads are a far more scalable and more realistic system than subscriptions are. It's a little bit hard to understand. We're talking about some pretty technical stuff. Also, with ads, you can um you can get other things like bits or other kinds of donations, things like that. So at the end of the day, what I'm saying is that ads are basically a better system for building a, the internet than any other system. And that's why we don't have a better system. Nobody has been able to find a better system than ads because ads are really great. We know they're effective, so they work for the brands. Uh, they're not too annoying for users, despite users complaining about them all the time. Uh, and they kind of beat out subscriptions in models like Twitch, where a high number of users don't want to invest initial capital because you're not sure what kind of content you're getting. On Netflix, you'll pay $12 a month to watch Netflix because you know what you're getting. You know you're getting a curated catalog of um, 
specific stuff that you'll be interested in, and you're going to sink hours into it, and it's worth your $12. But on Twitch, you can't know that. So nobody is going to, like, imagine if Twitch was gatekept by a subscription service. You log into Twitch, and now you've got to pay before you come in and you watch things. Like, obviously, that wouldn't work, right? So it has to monetize via ads. There's no other way to optimize a website that way. Anyone else that argues any differently just doesn't understand business. And I've had this argument a bunch of times, and, and you know, people have said, well, there must be some way for Twitch to make money other than that. Just, like, get sponsors. Like, you just don't understand business. You just have no idea how it works, right? The only way for people to actually make this work is via ads. So that is why ad systems are, are, are generally superior. No, always superior um, in, in, like, platforms like Facebook can't be gatekept by subscription revenue, right? Uh, Twitch can't be gatekept by subscription revenue. Any website like that, keep, let's keep going. All right, so um, what Twitch is doing is they're adding a targeted ad system, okay? We just went over why targeted ad systems are good. Targeted ad systems are good because targeted ad systems uh, allow us to separate between people that are actually brand risks and people that are not. You don't want to be in a category with a bunch of actual brand risks. So let's say that right now, if you sell an ad to Twitch, you can't be sure that that ad's going to appear on my channel or a channel that's an actual brand, uh, brand risk. The problem with that then is that that brand is just going to say, you know what, I don't want to deal with this then. Because if I, uh, if I don't know where my ad is going to show up, I don't want to deal with it. And that's causing Twitch, costing Twitch, literally hundreds of millions of dollars. All of the streamers who are not actually brand risks, and by the way, that's way more people than, like, God, the, the, the drama I have to deal with every day from people that are like, I'm a brand risk. I'm very edgy. Yes, all the things I say. Not really, okay? Because, like, if you were really somebody that was, like, a super risk, like, you'd, like they'd probably figure out a way to ban you. Ban, it's pretty straightforward what brand risks are, okay? Don't say sexist shit. Don't say racist shit. Don't say stuff that is, um, that is deliberately violent. It's not that hard to not be a brand risk. Most people on this platform that think they're a brand risk aren't really a brand risk. And I've had this conversation so many times and it's so annoying when somebody gets on their high horse and is like, oh, I'm a brand risk. Twitch really hates me. Like, dude, you don't understand. I Like, you don't get it. There are people on this platform that are legitimately brand risks and that's fine. But we want to separate those people into another category. And I've talked about this a lot where like we want to get some buckets. I want to pour all of the bad streamers in that bucket and then I'm going to be in the green bucket because the stuff I talk about is cool. And targeted ads will allow me and by extension, everybody else to make more money. So as a percentage, we are talking about 99.9%, .9%, literally that. I'd say one in every 100 partners are a legitimate brand risk, meaning that we can take one in every 100 partners, put them in a bucket over there, and then they make less money, but everybody else benefits. And the rising tide lifts every other boat. That's how it works on YouTube. That's how it works on Twitter. That's how it works on Instagram. That's how it works on Facebook. Every single social platform has some kind of ad targeting. So this has nothing to do with um, uh, anything to do whatsoever with trust and safety. It has nothing to do with bans. So this, like, if this streamer has been suspended, a general reason why, is just going to say, like, toss violation or something. Uh, this particular thing, which, uh, I mean, I'm telling you, again, say Sarah is, like, one of our OGs. He deliberately quick baited this. But, like, ban reasons are in this information. So Dr. Spooks will find out why he got banned. This is, like, a complete non-starter. This is, like, completely fucking untrue. It is just deliberately untrue. First of all, someone like uh, an individual viewer is not going to have access to this API. It's going to be advertisers and people like us, agencies that actually have access to this. Second of all, it's not going to be like a specific reason why someone got banned. It's just going to say TOS violation. Or it's, just, it's basically just a string to see if that person has been banned before. Again, so that people can add target better because a person that has been banned before is most likely going to be evaluated more as a, as a risk. This is not a social score. It has no, the, Twitch is not going to look at this. This for um it's it's an API again it's an API call that goes specifically through vaes.iad.adsystem.com which is Amazon's automated ad system that they use to sell to the Twitch carousel. It has nothing to do with trust and safety. It has nothing to do with bans. It has nothing to do with enforcement of policies on Twitch. It has nothing to do with any kind of evaluation of a streamer. It has nothing to do with any kind of social score. It doesn't affect you as at all. It doesn't make you less money. It doesn't do any of that. That is all bullshit that is being led by Reddit because nobody understands how to do business, which is why I guess that I um, am here because I have to explain stuff like this. Okay? There is – it is a complete non-starter. Like, I am the first person in line 
to be mad at Twitch um, for all kinds of things, okay? Why, if we, if we have the choice to be mad at Twitch for anything, why are we mad at Twitch for this? Why not be mad over the DMCA stuff? Why not be mad over the ridiculous amount of ads that are coming into the platform? The lack of discovery, even though it's 2021. Like, I'm literally getting messages from people on Twitter right now. A person will come in, and they will get five pre-roll ads. Five! Five pre-roll ads! Like, what? How is anybody watching this website right now without ad block? It's insane. Like, no one is going to want to watch this website with that kind of ad density. And what Twitch is doing is they are basically programmatically structuring this entire website into an ad platform. Because they have to make money. Because Twitch is losing money. I get told all the time that people are leaving this stream because of pre-rolls. And Twitch will eventually reach a state of, like, mark my words, I, I, I know this has to happen. Eventually, Twitch will reach a point where they have to force streamers to run ads. There is no way to monetize this platform unless uh, you do that. But I have people telling me that they're getting four or five or even six ads at 15 to 30 seconds each by entering a stream. And that's completely unsustainable. There's no way that anybody can, like, that, that, that a platform can survive that way. You have to fix that. So there's a way bigger discussion and a way bigger problem, which is outside of the scope of this talk, about Twitch moving towards an ad platform, which is what people should really be mad about. But this whole, like, drama around, like, um, brand safety or whatever, this is BS. Mm. Now, Twitch will be updating its, more, uh, its uh, policies and terms of service in the next six months to 12 months to better define what Twitch considers to be a brand risk or people that they even want, don't want on the website. And they're doing that again because of advertisers. We know that because Sarah Clemens said that at GwitchCon, the COO of Twitch. So it's, it's true that Twitch is updating to be a website that is uh, more aware of like what a brand risk is and what it isn't. So that's, that's definitely happening. Um, and it's going to become like, like words, like all this like banned word stuff, like all that stuff is going to be throwing people into like categories. Like, like they're going to be thrown into categories like yellow categories where they don't, there's a warning. They, they're not able to access advertisers. It's, it's true that more streamers are going to be considered in that bucket of um, people that are not going to be able to get as many ads or whatever. That's definitely true. But overall, as a website, this is an evolution that has to happen. We have to separate people that are actual brand risks from the vast majority of people that are not. Because otherwise, the vast majority of people that are not, and I say vast majority underlined, are going to suffer because of it. So I run a clean show, which is, at, is high value, and in a category that is very high value. Meaning that on YouTube, my category is like finance slash uh, content creation slash digital marketing. On YouTube, I'm not punished by the guy that makes videos about like violence or um, guns that other people don't want to advertise with, right? I get evaluated on the merit of my own content. That is absolutely how everything should be on Twitch as well. I should not be held back or held down by a person who is a legitimate brand risk on Twitch because my content, because their content is different, they choose to do that. We should never be attached to the outcomes of other streamers and how they choose to run their channels. So the only way to fix that is ad, tar is ad targeting. Every individual broadcaster gets to make a choice in order to uh, be the person they want to be. But if I don't get the choice and that choice is made for me, that sucks. Because I put in the work that I do for my channel. And again, I think we as partners and content creators need to move away from this idea that Twitch should be monetized through subscriptions. Giving away 50% of your income, go to any other business and say the, way, the main way that I make money, before I make any money, I give 50% of my income back to the platform that hosts me. Are you serious? Any venture capitalist would call you an idiot. Anybody that understood business at all would call you an idiot. And then, yeah, by the way, after that, you're taxed on the income. <laughs> so not only are you, not only are you given 50%, right? Not only are you done 
You're then taxed on it too. And you're not even taxed. You're taxed as a uh uh as a as a self-employed person. 1099. So you're taxed like an additional like 30% depending on your bracket. It sucks. So the system of advertising is way superior because again it can dynamically scale. Now, I I, I want to talk a little bit about again, Twitch being on a, a fixed CPM is really bad because it means that like Let's say that ads across the whole platform increase and Twitch makes 50% more money. You as a streamer currently don't see a single dime of that because you're on a fixed CPM no matter what. So that's a whole other system that needs to be addressed. I don't know if it ever will be because honestly, I think the whole reason why that's like, why isn't that being talked about? Why don't you clip that and post that on LSF? Because that's, that's a big deal. The fact is that no matter how much more money Twitch makes, streamers will never make more money. But we never talk about this stuff because it's boring. And because I'm old and fat and I sit here yelling about Twitch and nobody cares. Well, some of you do, but like not like the wide majority of people because it's cool to talk about people having Chinese social credit scores. that They're completely untrue. Total bullshit. Where we should really be talking about the travesty that's happening to streamers is they can't make full-time income off of ads. If you have a channel on YouTube that is 100K subscribers, you can make full-time income off of ads. That's awesome. You don't have to, subs- you don't have to, you don't have to target your community at all. Your community doesn't have to pay you a single dime to be there. Now they can. Like you can do subscriptions on YouTube or you can do a Patreon or whatever, any kind of other vertical things that we talk about on this channel all the time, but you don't have to. So the fact that I have to bleed you guys out for five bucks a month that I only see 50% of and then I get taxed on is horseshit and a terrible business model. We should, no- we should not normalize making money off of subscriptions on Twitch. doesn't make any sense, uh, at least the way that Twitch does it. If Twitch wanted to take six, uh, 20% instead of 50%, that'd be great, but I don't see that happening anytime soon. At the very least, they could be competitive with YouTube. So do you think that Amazon's ad backend will completely replace this old ad system from Twitch? I don't know. Um, I think that it will take a very long time for Twitch to build a system that allows for automatic ad targeting uh, and separates people correctly by category because currently Twitch has fuck all for that. But uh, presently, it's looking encouraging uh, like, this kind of thing is a good start. But to support something like this requires a lot of uh, machine learning that is able to sort of, like, tell automatically where a streamer sits. Because there is no way that we can do a manual review of every broadcaster, and there are a lot of problems with that, too. Uh, like, like you're not able to build an ad system that goes off the manual review of, like, individual, like, what they call Twitch-affiliated reviewers. Because that's nonsense. Like, like, like... What's the, th- there's too much subjective value in that. You have to automate the system. After reading everything about this Twitch stuff, I'm like, man, I'm disappointed again. Okay. Every single platform on the planet has an ad targeting system. Twitch's is literally in its infancy compared to Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, e- Amazon, literally everything. I mean, every single thing has a risk score. You have to have one. Like Amazon even has a risk score for package returns, right? Like if you return too many packages, you might be you might get flagged and then they're like, "Oh, this guy is returning packages like that guy who would weigh dirt and return a package with dirt in it and nobody ever opened the boxes and he got like 3 million dollars from Amazon." That's why risk scores exist. They don't exist for 99.9% of people. They exist for the actual brand risks that bring it down for everybody else, right? The the very few people on the platform compared to the vast majority that bring it down for everybody else. That's why brand brand scores exist. And those have to exist so everybody else gets paid their cheddar. There's no other news. The people just want a reason to be mad at Twitch. That's all. This is a really good thing in the long run. It'll benefit the vast majority of broadcasters, affiliates, and partners because ad ad revenue will go up. And it's been a thing for all time, right? Um, It'll be a thing anywhere there's ads, right? Um, Every agency does it. Every brand asks for it. What, 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 who am I advertising with, right? Like, like, who is this person? What do they do? And right now, Twitch can't ask, um, uh, can't answer that problem. They can't, they can't, they're like, oh, I don't know. Like, literally every brand, if you want to spend a million dollars on Twitch, right? Is, is going to come to you and they're going to be like, uh, where am I, where's my ad going? And right now, the way that Twitch answers that is like, well, uh, I don't know. It goes on to all of Twitch. And, uh, well, who's going to see my ad? Uh, men, mostly, and some women, and a guy that plays Fortnite, maybe. And uh, maybe a grandma. Like, like there's, there's no targeting whatsoever. You have no idea. So the website is unsustainable in this forum. You have to do ad targeting. Ad targeting is good. Ad targeting means that rates go up for everybody. 
more people make more money. It's all good. So this whole thing, again, I just want to stress, there is nothing to do with bans, trust and safety, blah, 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 scores that make you get banned or not. Um, it's just ridiculous. There's just nothing like that. It's an ad targeting system through Amazon's um, ad portal, which is literally why the API calls directly to it. Okay, thanks. That's my talk. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Sorry for getting butt mad, but literally waking up and seeing my own community quick make me into having to make a video was a little frustrating. Anyway, I love you guys. Despite that, thank you for having me have this talk. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube, and if you want to get in on, like, the real crazy stuff that's going on, join the Discord, because that's where, like, this got discovered hours and hours before it got posted anywhere. Join the Discord.gg slash Devin. We're doing all kinds of stuff like that all the time. Thanks!